Welcome to Escaping Purgatory, a podcast where we re-watch Supernatural, then talk it through in the hope that we can finally escape this show. Join us each week, leave comments on upcoming episodes, and together we can escape Supernatural Purgatory. So, we've just come back from our break. I hope everybody had a lovely weekend without us. <laughs> um, <laughs> we definitely, well, I didn't need it because I'm a lazy <laughs> lazy so-and-so amy needed it because she edits everything and needs time to uh catch up and so welcome back everybody (laughs) we're happy to have you here so we're going to be starting off with kind of a weak season (laughs) opener let's let's not Mm. let's not kid ourselves here going into season three episode one the magnificent seven Mm. yes it was there (laughs) I was ex- I was so excited to start season three because, in all honesty, season three is so short. I remember parts of it and characters, and I I don't remember how we get from there to the end. I remember the end of this series really, really well. <laughs> but this was not a good season opener. Like, what happened? Yeah, it was. Like I said, it was very weak. I'm wondering if it was a case of too much and not enough time. Hmm. Just because the idea that they introduce in this episode has the potential to be really good. Yeah. I think the other problem I have with this episode, so spoiler alert for the entire episode, (laughs) they've had trouble trying to defeat one demon in a lot of episodes and Mm -hmm. suddenly they can defeat seven. Yeah. I I feel like this was just an upping of stakes. Like they want they knew that all these theme like the demons had been released from the, you know, end of season two because this is happening only a week after that. Right. Um, so and so I think what they're trying to prepare us for is an upping of the stakes. Mm-hmm. But it's it's too sudden a jump. Yes. <laughs> Granted there's like Bobby as well, so it's just not two of them. Yeah. As amazing as Bobby is, he's also just a person he's just a guy (laughs) (laughs) just a guy well and and i guess there's also a tamra as well there's a few things with this like i I had a a problems with a bit of it there were some parts that were good yes i think as we go into it characterization is a weird one in this definitely there's there's some hmm who wrote and directed this is you know my question (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well we know who directed it you can tell but well even the styling mm. i felt like i didn't quite pick up that it was kim manners in this one there wasn't so many the tight shots were not as prevalent i feel there were some really pretty shots in this episode and i've made a note of some yeah. of them i think because it wasn't a very uh emotional episode we didn't have the like classic kim manners like right on the face to show every single emotion you've ever felt in your whole <laughs> life in one go <laughs> It was more actiony, which I I don't feel like he normally. I don't know. He probably has done some in Supernatural, but I always remember him for the emotional scenes. This was written by Eric Kripke. He knew what he wanted to do with this, I guess. <laughs> so a little bit of observation on my part was also that this episode aired like a month before the Writer Strike mm-hmm. started to happen. I mean, it's it's odd that you can't mention this season without the Writer Strike, really, because it had such a profound effect on Supernatural generally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the end of the season was never supposed to happen, but it did because of the writer's strike. I'm, I'll, we'll talk more about that as we go through, but like maybe you're <laughs> right. Like there is, I think there's some odd beats in this season, and maybe some of them people who would normally be working and normally writing weren't. I don't know too much about it. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. If anyone has any more background information on the writer's strike and season three, please send it to us. We'd be happy to take take your knowledge. <laughs> so I guess we can um, get into it. So it starts with the road so far. So weird for me. Um, I'm watching like an old version DVD. No road so far. I didn't have a road. I didn't watch it. Really? Nope. It just started literally on the title card for a now. Huh. Hmm. So I mean, the road so far was just basically a montage of like all of season two. <laughs> Again, sh- kind of showing showing a lot of the monsters that they killed. A lot of sex, which I feel like there wasn't that much of it in season two, but like it was a lot of like, making out with who like wait well there was heart there was the demon kisses there was a whole bunch of stuff yeah and then it's got like sort of the last few scenes of season two so yeah then it cuts to now and we're in oak park illinois (laughs) and so this is uh, just a 
random man he's taking out the the rubbish so the reason i laugh is because this is why i never take out my rubbish <laughs> late at night because something bad always happens like literally it was it was bin day today for me yeah. like the day that we're recording like i could have done it last night i was i thought about it and then i was like no it's dark out something <laughs> bad's gonna happen <laughs> it's so true oh uh, yeah Normally the yeah. bad thing for us is just a fat cat trying to get in the bin bags, but fine. <laughs> and, you know, so the guy gets, he's taken out his, his rubbish and he kind of gets distracted by flickering lights and this, that and the other and this massive cloud. Why did his bin start wiggling? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> was it the wind? Is that why? Was it supposed to be the wind? <laughs> I think maybe it was like a, because it's a, a denseness to it, right? I guess that's what they were trying yeah. to... What you're saying is, it was a supernatural wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gets possessed. Kind of a possession. I don't know. Okay, it's, it's a real weird thought. I just thought about what, like, the, the demon smoke would, like, taste like as it goes into your mouth. <laughs> because I don't know what it was about watching this guy get possessed, but I was like, that is unpleasant. And... It would definitely just taste like gone off eggs, right? Because of the little sulfur. The sulfur, yeah. And there's this like thinking, like your last kind of same thought before you're possessed by a demon is like, oh, eggs. Like, <laughs> <laughs> do you think you have enough? Well, I was gonna say, do you think you have enough time to think about that? But I, it, it was a long sequence. Mm. That's what, yeah, the big demon. And now that's all I'm going to think about with every possession scene. <laughs> it's like, oh, the, the rotten eggs and taste. And smell. I, I kind of imagine it like candy floss, like as it went into your mouth, it would just sort of like shrink down. I don't know. Why am I thinking about this so much? So I was, you know, thinking about it, I, you know, when you like sit around a campfire and mm. sometimes like the smoke kind of blows your way from the wind or whatever. I wonder if it's more like that. So it kind of almost like dries out your mouth a little bit. Oh, good point. Yeah, I think so. Hmm. either way it's not a, it's probably not a nice sensation <laughs> no i can't imagine that it is it's just i don't know why this guy made me think of it <laughs> i wonder why they chose to do possession in this way it's quite like, violating they, they, i feel right yeah they kind of showed like the smoke spreading everywhere i guess this was supposed to be as they opened the gates this kind of thing so it says yeah yeah and then the title card comes up so i need to know what do you what do you think of the title card <laughs> I'm not a fan. <laughs> it's super plain. And like, in comparison to the flames that we just had, mm -hmm. this kind of, I, I get it, it's supposed to probably show gates and doors, right? They just open the gates of hell, but like... I saw like, I the devil's trap with the scorpion in, like superimposed on it, that flashes up, and then there's like a mm -hmm. storm in the background, and there are references throughout this to a storm, and like, the demons they let out causing a storm. So I guess that's what that is. And it's all blue. I don't know. I agree. I, I It still phases like the ghost one as well. Yeah. Which I guess ghosts and demons are represented in very similar ways. Mm, they are actually. In the show. That's completely true. But yeah, I do miss the old one, but well, it, it doesn't stay forever, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's literally, it's literally 16 episodes and that's it. So... So we cut to one week later. So it's been one week since they opened the gates of hell by accident. Or like, I don't know, let Jake do it. They seem to be blaming themselves a lot for this, for something that wasn't really their fault, but fine. We see Sam reading up. He's in the Impala and he's reading about crossroad demons. Because of course he is. And he sees Dean through the window of a motel room wearing an outfit we've never seen Dean wear. Why is he wearing like a white vest? Like when ever have we, no? I don't know. <laughs> but he's giving Sam like a thumbs up and he looks uh, pretty happy with himself. He closes the curtains and Sam kind of laughs. And we see Dean in shadow like undressing a lady. So that's why he's super, super peppy. <laughs> yeah, he's, um, he's embraced his year to live. Mm. He's gone the hedonist route, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna I was gonna say maybe embrace isn't the right word, but I mean it could be. If that's <laughs> if that's what you want to do with your last year is to, you know, have sexual relations with as many people, you do that. You yeah. absolutely do that. I mean you could do that anyway. Just be safe <laughs> about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly that. 
Sam gets a phone call and it's Bobby. I'm pleased they immediately brought Bobby back because he had played such a big part in the last episode. I feel like it would have been weird if he hadn't been around all of a sudden. Yes. And Bobby is kind of like, I don't know, checking in on Sam mm. and Dean, right? But to your point, like, Ellen Ellen was also kind of a big part of the last episode. That's true. <laughs> and she doesn't come back. <laughs> he's, yeah, I guess he is, he is checking in. But I, I'd imagine they they would have been in quite close communication after such a big event. Like mm-hmm. they're trying to track down everything, surely. Yeah. But he he also knows that they get obsessive mm. about things, so that's also another reason, probably why. Because he also he talks about Sam reading about demons and or like crossroad demons and stuff. That's true. I guess the first thing you do once you've made a mistake is like assess the damage. And I think that's what Bobby's doing. He's like going and seeing what damage the demons have caused. But mm-hmm. he's he's more kind of asking about Dean though here and kind of checking in with Sam and making sure that he's not doing anything crazy to save Dean. I think this is partly what that is. Um, yeah. Just sort of like, have you found anything yet? You know, what are you going to do? Because he knows that if Sam does find a out for Dean that he probably would take it without consulting him what you said yeah. last episode is quite good that I think Dean selling his soul was kind of the trigger for Bobby to be like these kids need a parent <laughs> yeah <laughs> for sure <laughs> mm-hmm. you can you can definitely see him step up into this role when when he asks where is Dean Sam says polling the electorate which is like I've never heard of that expression used in that way i just thought what a weird line <laughs> <laughs> like and like is is the polling the joke <laughs> like <laughs> yeah i think it's supposed to be <laughs> anyway bobby's got something so he wants them to meet up um so sam knocks on the motel door and the song i don't know what the song's called but it's like you ain't seen nothing yet <laughs> anyway <laughs> So, and Sam walks in on something that he doesn't want to see. But, like, you know what's happening. So why would you do that? That was exactly what I was like. You have just, you've seen him give you the thumbs up. There's, like, I think there's, like, a bra or something on the door handle. Yeah. On the outside. Mm -hmm. Like, no, like, he's not going to hear you knocking on the door. (laughs) No. You know exactly what you're walking into. And his face that he pulls of, like, pure, like, disgust (laughs) (laughs) it's actually hilarious I don't know what makes that scene of like Dean's wahoo at the end like what is it yeah yeah. it's it's like they forgot how sex works because nobody (laughs) says that (laughs) just shaming our wahoo listeners out there yes (laughs) I mean, if, if you do that and you're with a new partner, maybe don't do that because they're going to look at you kind of weird. <laughs> sort of e- ease into that one. <laughs> ease into the wahoo. <laughs> oh my god. What do you think he saw that made him so disgusted? <laughs> no, I did think this and I thought, wait, we can't discuss this on a podcast. But we no, okay, we can't. I don't know. Something that he didn't want to see. Um, I mean, I think anything... We could take you... many guesses from things that Dean has said about him having sex. There was prob I mean, the Yahoo is probably it was probably cowboy something. Oh, you know he was wearing a cowboy hat. You know that's what it was. <laughs> like, honestly. <laughs> Good lord. Oh dear. Anyway, to you know, we just want to put that mental image in <laughs> in your mind. Um, <laughs> since it was in mine, so now you have it. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so we cut to Dean driving rather recklessly. He's just Mm -hmm. like, he's really enjoying life right now. Sam is horrified, maybe turning a little slightly green too, (laughs) with this like reckless driving, which I mean, I, 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 again, I understand why he's doing this, but do you really think he would risk, he's, he's doing it. He's driving fast, but I don't think he's driving particularly recklessly because he is trying to keep Mm -hmm. Sam alive. So. It's funny because I literally had this conversation with my husband the other day where he was like, you know, I can always tell when you're angry when we, when we drive together because you drive angry. And I was like, what does that even mean? <laughs> Apparently my emotions only come through behind a steering wheel. 
Um, I feel like that's the same for most people, to be fair. Yeah, you know, because Hollywood trope of like crying and driving. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that. I've definitely had. I like. I'm generally not an angry person. Like beyond John Winchester. Um, <laughs> But I get some, I get some bad road rage in this country. Mm. It's, it's, mm, it's bad. Anyway. So Sam says, let me see your knife uh, so I can gouge my eyes out um, after he (laughs) caught Dean in that motel room. And basically Sam is kind of giving Dean a pass. He's like, oh no, you know, you deserve to have fun. It's, it's weird, right? He's acquiescing to him so much in this episode. Like Dean Mm -hmm. gets away with everything. And I feel like Bobby calls him out. Yeah, right. I, I think Bobby is, is putting the... I think Bobby can see what they're, what they're doing. The weird mm-hmm. thing they've got going on between them in this episode. Because <laughs> it is odd. Like, just like saying, even this conversation in the car, like, the spectre of what Dean's done is, like, hanging over them for this, mm-hmm. whole, this, whole, this whole time. I think it does kind of get addressed at the end a little bit. Not as much as I would like, maybe. Mm-hmm. And gone back to their old Winchester ways and just not addressing it in any way. <laughs> any constructive way. Mm, exactly. It's just avoid, avoid, avoid. Um, so they, they give sort of like a little bit of exposition. 17 cities had mm-hmm. seen some sort of demon event. They seem kind of carefree about it, right? They're not, I mean, there's only so much they can really do, which I, I understand. What have, they, what have they actually been doing for a week, apart from like... <laughs> monitoring things <laughs> um yeah i don't know like there's got to be some point where like the thing is sam was so worried about this like this was mm-hmm. his main problem all through season one all through season two like the demon's gonna take hold of me and like make me do something bad and then the bad thing happened <laughs> i guess at this point he kind of has almost a weight lifted from his shoulders he didn't do he didn't open the gates of hell he didn't do it he was mm-hmm. worried that he was going to do something and he didn't. So I guess he kind of feels a little bit like innocent of this in a way. Like they tried to stop it and they failed, but they did try. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a really tough one. I mean, Dean makes an interesting comment here. He's like, I kind of just want this war to start. Mm-hmm. Like instead of all this w- waiting, he just like wants it over with to like kind of have, because I guess th- there's nothing, obviously Dean is a man of action. He mm-hmm. likes to have things to do. A lot of this is sort of waiting and seeing. The demons are not making any kind of move, which we kind of get an indication to as to why that is in this episode. Yeah. What are the demons waiting for? It's man, it's driving me crazy. I tell you, if it's going to be war, I wish you'd just start already. I don't know, man. Careful what you wish for. The, the surprise on Sam's face when mm. Dean, apparently being carefree, but also actually paying attention. It's just like, he's still Dean. Like, yeah. He's still going to be paying attention to what's happening in the world, even if he's like kind of disconnected from it a little bit. Yeah, that's right. You're right, actually. Like Dean is present here, but he is disconnected. I like that. I think that's yeah, that that's really true. Actually, it made me laugh because Bobby described as where he was was just outside Lincoln, Nebraska, and then they bring that up on the screen as like just outside <laughs> Lincoln, Nebraska. It's such a cheap goat joke. I love it. He he had said that there were like crop failures and cicadas or cicadas, and you can hear them as they pull up. Dean's eating a sandwich. Bobby calls him out on it and says, like, why are you eating that, like, terrible, terrible sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> so we're eating bacon cheeseburgers for breakfast, are we? Well, so my soul. Got a year to live. I ain't sweating the cholesterol. I mean, you still you still got to survive a year. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay. We'll talk about that. <laughs> And, like, Dean's knocking on the door, shouting, Candy Graham. He's basically acting like Dean kind of turned up to 11. You know, it's all the, his yes. kind of traits, but it's just very, very heightened. Um, but there's no one home, so he picks the lock, um, lock and they go inside. They all cough because it stinks inside the house. They kind of, like, sweep it around with their guns, which always makes me think of the gag reel, because they always mess about when they're doing this. <laughs> And they hear like a woman crying out. And when they go into the room, they find three corpses watching television. I didn't know what the TV show was. I tried to figure it out and I wasn't sure at all. It looks like some kind of old classic movie. Why do you think (laughs) they made the corpse of... Because I'm guessing the corpses, because I keep calling them a family. 
So I'm guessing mm-hmm. it was like a husband and wife and maybe their like older son. Mm-hmm. Why did they dress the middle corpse like Dean was dressed at the beginning of this episode in like a really specific way? He even has kind of the same haircut. So I don't know because there's also, so in this next little se- sequence, I hear like a noise outside mm. and it everything's really quiet, but there's one line that comes out really clearly from the TV and it says, I hate this family. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> I didn't, I so I didn't clock the, the clothes, the clothes thing. I don't know. Is it like, it's choices. Like, because they, they, it's definitely choices. But I don't know what those choices mean or if they mean anything at all. This is it. Like, okay, so we'd never seen Dean in like a white vest before. And then like this mm-hmm. corpse is dressed like him in the house they found. It's just like, it's like it's foreshadowing something that we already know is going to happen. Do you know what I mean? Like, we, yeah. we know Dean's going to die in a year. So why are you foreshadowing his death? <laughs> I also caught up on I, I hate this family line as well. It's too clear to not, like, unless it's a really bad audio mistake, like, it's too clear not to be on purpose. Mm-hmm. And while she says that line, it's zoomed in on Dean's face. Okay, Supernatural, being subtle slash not subtle. Like yeah. <laughs> and I, I wonder if there's... Because I don't remember exactly the conversation that's had at the end of this episode. Mm-hmm. There, there's a, there is... There was something that is said in this episode. is about, like, sacrificing for fa- family or mm-hmm. sacrificing everything. So, and we already know that in, in what is and what should never be... I should have... Whatever the title is. It's too long. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's he already resents the idea that he always has to sacrifice so i wonder if it's like it was a moment for dean where he's just like oh i i hate this family because i have to sacrifice so much for this family mm. but really i mean because you you have you have those moments of weakness weakness of like thinking something thinking something even though you know it's not true yeah like I know, I know. I've also I've resented my family at one point. Yeah, I think that's normal, right? To be like, oh, you know, if I had a different family, things would be different. <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly. Like I wonder, along with the it conversation at the end of this episode, Dean's very smart, right? We've established this. <laughs> I wonder if he can see the beginning of the cycle. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I might talk about this a little bit more at the end, but I might as well say it now while it's in my head. So, okay. John made a deal for Dean. Dean came back to life. Sam died. Dean made a deal for Sam. You know, he came back to life. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, Sam's pretty much already said to him, like, oh, we're going to save you. Dean's not stupid. He knows that these things come with a cost. So, like, at what cost are they going to save him? And I think think he can almost see the, the cycle of, like, sacrificing, bringing back, playing out over the years almost. Mm -hmm. Uh, there must be some, you know, he, he's he's literally saying, like, I want this to, you know, I wish the war would start. Like, I wish it would happen. He says, like, in this episode as well, like, I'm tired and kind of all this kind of... He's already tired of the cycle that hasn't actually begun yet. Of the, like, yes. the, the sacrifice and the death and the coming back to life. And, like, it's mm-hmm. um, it's pretty odd to see a character be tired of their own story that hasn't even happened yet. <laughs> When you when you have had what twenty seven years mm-hmm. of, or actually I guess it's closer to maybe twenty three, twenty four years mm-hmm. of a parent who's willing to sacrifice everything, yeah, and then they do they sacrifice their life for you, mm-hmm. and then you do the same. You that <laughs> there's something in that that you know that that pattern is gonna gonna be there. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 really it's really tough this one. And, it's so weird this episode because they're almost out of character, you know. Mm-hmm. But it makes sense as a story of why they're out of character because you would be in this situation. <laughs> I so I love the fact. Okay, so he hears he hears this noise. Mm-hmm. He whistles <laughs> and then he does hand movements, <laughs> and it's like so. Whoever you just saw heard your whistle. <laughs> so what's the point? And it wasn't like a quiet whistle either. No, it like, wasn't. I feel like if I was in this situation, I probably would have like clicked my fingers because at least that way it's like quiet. I know it's really rude to click your fingers at people. <laughs> Just do flappy hands. Like... Flappy hands get attention. 
But they're manly men. They can't do the flappy hands. You know? That's true. Anyway. That's very true. They all head outside. Well, Dean heads outside. A man and a woman run up on him and knock him down to the ground fairly quickly. Disarm mm-hmm. him. And then Bobby comes out and says, Isaac? Tamara? Bobby, what the hell are you doing here? I could ask the same. Hey, you, Bobby. <laughs> Hello. Bleeding here. And I just wrote, she's British. <laughs> <laughs> yep, she is. She's from Torchwood. Shoot, of course she is. Yep. You are correct. You are correct. I looked her up because I was like, I recognise her, but I don't know why. She's also an Aeon Flux, like the uh, Charlie's Theron one, oh, right. the live action one. Yeah, okay. I don't remember her in that one. Mm. <laughs> I was going to say, she is actually British then, because it sounded like she was yes. putting on a bad accent. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nope, she is actually British. Her name is Caroline Charkizy. I, I thought it was interesting. I don't know why it stuck out to me that she was British. I think this is just such an American show. It was odd. Like, do you know what I mean? I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's just, it, just her accent really, really, really stuck out. I'm not saying I didn't appreciate it, but I also do feel she was definitely hamming it up for an American audience. I think so. Well, I don't think so. I think that's actually what she sounds like, but it's just she has just a very english accent like uh, we don't yeah. have we don't have the english accent i don't well i don't, i know i definitely don't i mean because there are british people that do sound like that it's just actually very much in the minority you know. it really is it is just for any americans who've never actually been to the uk like i mean you can tell by this podcast we don't all sound like the queen <laughs> no absolutely not <laughs> I think so. It's kind of funny that they they introduced they, we've had two seasons, and then in this season we get two British actresses. Yeah, I know, right? I love that. Um, though I, I feel like most people don't realize that Bella's actually British and not oh, yeah. American because of The Walking Dead. Like mm-hmm. she did such a good job in that that they forget that she's actually from England. Yay! So <laughs> again, like a, another like funny moment because as Bobby kind of shouts at them. Um, Dean kind of you see his hand appear from the ground like help me and then it's suddenly night time they're at a different house right I was very yes. confused okay yes good okay fine yeah yeah they are because it, they are t- or yeah they're at some sort of base of operation because yeah. Tamara and Isaac are very much comfortable in this area like there's a whole bunch of their like things yeah which I mean kind of implies that maybe this is their house that's what I thought too, like it was their house. Or at least like, yeah, like you said, like a base of operations. So we, we get a little bit of backstory about Tamara and Isaac. And then Sam seems kind of hostile to them, right? It's not just me. <laughs> yeah, I I think, I think you're right. Okay, so we kind of, we find out that they're married, right? So they're a married mm-hmm. hunter couple, which I imagine is fairly rare in their line of work, which mm-hmm. is maybe why... Sam's kind of, I don't know, a bit standoffish about it. They kind of trade lore. So they tell him about like a wooden stake, which is so Buffy. <laughs> like the stake is so Buffy. Like it's a prop yes. from Buffy that apparently works like holy water if you stake a demon with it. Sam kind of asks them how they got started. I don't know if this is so much hostile as Sam not knowing much about hunter etiquette because Bobby kind of gives him a look like, you don't ask that question. But at the same time, when they met Gordon, they asked the same question and he wasn't offended by it. We were talking about it. What, actually, even then, we were, we were saying it felt weird mm-hmm. to ask that kind of question. Yeah. So so maybe there is hunter etiquette that you don't just... You as hunters have to give your story rather than ask mm. about your story. I think it's so. more that like, is there any good story about how you became, hunted, like, became a hunter? Like, is there any story that's not going to be a horrible trauma that happened to you probably not like you're you're either like you're either a victim of something mm-hmm. supernatural or like a family member is <laughs> exactly so i mean being a hunter you would know that that i'd like so you mm-hmm. wouldn't ask right <laughs> that's true oh everybody sam probably has the least trauma mm-hmm. of how he got into hunting yeah I mean, his whole his whole childhood was trauma, but like it wasn't a single point of trauma. Mm. Like, if you think about how they would both answer that question, so Dean would say, 
well, my mother died in a fire and then my dad hunted the demon and he uh, trained me up along the way. Whereas Sam mm-hmm. would say, well, it's just always been that way. My dad was a hunter and I was raised right. in the life. Right. So for him, I don't think he equates necessary being a hunter with Mary as much as Dean does. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because obviously Mary would be John and Dean's point of tra- trauma. Exactly. Yeah. So Dean comes in, he's been talking to the coroner's tech on the phone, talking about getting apple teenies with her, which his face when he says apple teeny is just amazing. <laughs> um, he says, Get this. I wrote that too. <laughs> <laughs> he said that the family they found died of dehydration and starvation, even though the house was full of food. So it's super weird and like supernaturally. Bobby hasn't seen anything like it ever. Because he's now the point of authority. (laughs) Exactly. Bobby is the new John. He's the new John journal. (laughs) Sam kind of asks them, well, you know, if we've never seen anything like this before, what do we do? And Mm -hmm. Isaac's line. We're not going to do anything. What do you mean? You guys seem nice enough, but this ain't Scooby-Doo. Which is just great because it is (laughs) Scooby-Doo. It is. And it will be. (laughs) So Sam, kind, you know, Sam being Sam wants them to all work together, mm-hmm. even though Isaac thinks they are idiots. Basically, Isaac and Tamara know who they are. They know what they did. <laughs> they know about the gates of hell and, and the end of the world stuff, right? How? How did they know within a week that it was the Winchesters? Because the people, the only people that were there... So, okay, the, the my mm-hmm. theory is... Okay, the only people that were there were Bobby, Ellen, and Sam and Dean. Yeah. So my theory is they've obviously been hunting demons since this has happened. Mm-hmm. Demons have been telling them that it was the Winchesters. Oh, okay. I had a different theory. <laughs> I like <laughs> yours though. Because it was such a big problem, I feel like Bobby told Ellen to contact the hunters and tell them what had happened. Because it's like, whoopsie. Yeah. <laughs> and technically, Sam and Dean didn't do it. But then again, you know, the the whole game of telephone. Yeah. It gets the, like, it becomes Sam and Dean Winchester release Demons of Hell rather than, <laughs> I mean, because that's kind of a, that's a long story to try and tell yeah. somebody, right? Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I do, do wonder if it was, it was shortened down to like, we were there and then it was like, we did it. <laughs> and then it was... They did nothing to stop it. <laughs> well, I mean, this is it, isn't it? Um, because they don't seem too friendly towards the Winchesters. No. Tamara is a bit more friendly. She kind of stopped Isaac, ha- Isaac having a go at them too much. But yeah, um, the Hunters aren't happy with the Winchesters. And I do wonder if this is the beginning of like the Hunter Network not really liking the Winchesters because mm-hmm. they definitely have. The, there's a few who are fine with them and I guess it's because of the Bobby connection. Yeah. But I feel like most of them ha- have no interest. Again, because they know as soon as they have they work with the Winchesters, they're probably going to die. I mean, <laughs> case in point, like, come on. <laughs> right. Exactly. So they have, they have no interest of working with them. But okay, so essentially Tamara leads her husband away, which, again, which is kind of weird because why would why would they leave their base of operation? You brought war down on us. On all of us. Okay. That's quite enough testosterone for now. So while they're having this conversation, we see outside the house someone is watching them spookily from the shadows. It is a blonde lady who is staring at the house and she seems very, um... You know that kind of stare from under the eyelashes that people do where it's like, I'm being creepy. It's kind of like that. (laughs) But we don't get a name. She's just sort of there. We don't know who she is whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So we cut to the next morning, or the next afternoon, it's the next day. We see the man who was possessed in the beginning of the episode, and he walks into a shop. He walks up to a a lady in there and says, don't those shoes look really nice? Wouldn't you like those shoes? Yeah. She goes over to this other woman who's looking at the shoes, and says hey can I have them and she says no and the other woman who was spoken to by the demon says hey no I really I really want those shoes Mm -hmm. and then she attacks her by like smashing her head into this 
windscreen, which is like the the deaths in this episode make gruesome. me uncomfortable. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> like, this yeah. this whole scene, I had. <laughs> This is, this is like a, a picture into my mind at like whenever I was watching this late at night. As he walks into the shop, in the background of the shop, there are two cowboy hats, right? <laughs> I'm not laughing at me, guys. There are two cowboy hats. A green cowboy hat and a blue cowboy hat and they are stacked like on top of each other. Okay. <laughs> Secondly, as he walks up to the woman, he puts his hand on her shoulder in order to corrupt her in some way. And all I could think while I was watching that was <laughs> why were they foreshadowing Destiny Hour in season three? <laughs> <laughs> only, well, I, w- I would say only you, but there is going to be a whole community behind you <laughs> that is 100% in agreement with your theory. <laughs> Okay, I, I did screenshot the cowboy hats to prove I'm not completely <laughs> off my rocker. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Um, this, it shows it's a really good episode when you're finding the cowboy hats in the background. <laughs> and also, like, I'm very, very specifically conditioned to look for those colours. So, like, <laughs> a, a year, it's been a year. I've been a year of this, Annabelle, like, honestly. Um <laughs> So, anyway, this is unusual for this show, but the next scene is a, is a crime scene. And because, obviously, this woman attacked this other woman in broad daylight, there's actually yeah. crime scene people there. I did hear... Oh, and Sam as well, because, of course, Sam's there. One of the um, crime scene tech people says, better get Grissom, um, because they surely <laughs> mean John Grissom from... Is that CSI? NCIS? NCIS? No, where is Grissom from? Oh, no, you're right, you're right. It's CSI. Yeah, CSI, right? So I thought that was really funny that they put that in there. <laughs> Dean's in the shop and he's, like, chatting up a witness. Um, you know, he's kind of flirting with this woman. He's clearly still on his, like, hedonist streak. And Sam interrupts him. And I don't know why this was so funny. Like, I was honestly, like, <laughs> losing it. Dean, what are you doing? Comforting the bereaved. What are you doing? Working. Dead body, possible demon attack, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Sam, I'm sorry, just, you know, I don't have much time left, and, uh... (coughs) Gotta make every second count. Yeah, right, all right. Sorry. Apology accepted. He kind of asks Dean, like, what are you up to? And Dean asks him, like, what are you up to? And Sam says, like, working. (laughs) And he says it like that, he just goes, yeah, I'm I'm working. (laughs) And I just love it. I love it too. (laughs) And he, like, makes, like, a really good face while he's doing it. And, like, I don't... It was just really really funny to me dean tries to play the sympathy card he's like coughing like ah, i've only got so long to live like ah, <laughs> must flirt with women <laughs> yeah i it was i it was hilarious i don't know why just look it's jared's <laughs> choice there of just like working <laughs> i can hear it <laughs> i love him for that it didn't st- stand out to me the thing that stood out to me was like Dean coughing, but like not covering his mouth. I was just like, no, this this whole like pandemic thing has just made me like really sensitive. To people just coughing outright. That's true, actually. <laughs> it's literally like coughing in some space. Um, so Bobby turns up and he's in this nice suit and he pretends to be the assistant to the DA to mm-hmm. try and get some information from the like officers on, on the scene. And he tells him it's not a usual possession, you know, none of the usual signs mm-hmm. of blackouts and that kind of stuff she was i can't remember the word that she he said but she was basically present mm-hmm. the whole time that the attack took place they're trying to figure out like oh how, how can we see what happened and like i love dean is a sort of like yeah i was working too look because he points at a cctv camera so they go and watch the video and and basically we see this guy mm-hmm. or the the guy at the beginning of the episode sam leave And as he's walking, we see the same blonde woman from earlier, and she's across the street. She sort of follows him, Mm -hmm. and then crosses over the street to really follow Sam, (laughs) which has, you know, has the implication that she is interested in Sam over any of the other, like Bobby or or Dean. But Sam being Sam, 
he kind of picks up on something Mm -hmm. um turns around and she's disappeared so we know that she is not normal Mm. because the way that she disappears is very very fast there's no like there was there's no way that she could have just walked down an alleyway or something so bobby and dean are like on a stakeout at night they're kind of like looking at this guy's house i think oh no no it's not they're they're at a bar where the guy was known to drink and then Sam kind of turns up, like scares them, by, like knocking on the window. <laughs> and I think Bobby's there in Bobby's car. I think it's only like a three door because he like squishes behind like Dean's chair to get in. And I am very impressed <laughs> yes. that that uh, that Jared can actually get in. Like that's not an easy feat to like just push a chair forward a little bit <laughs> and like squeeze your way in the back. And no. I was like, I just really appreciate that. I mean. It's Spider Sam all over again. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so right. It definitely, definitely is. Oh my god. <laughs> like being able to contort yourself into like small spaces. <laughs> Sam here has brought them information that like this guy is called Walter Rosen and he went missing a week ago. Okay. I, I wrote here, what has happened to Sam in all caps? So, <laughs> because I don't know why what it was this scene or like him squishing into the car or the one before where he was like joking with Dean kind of like what they were doing and stuff but I don't know they've suddenly started writing Sam differently right for season Mm -hmm. three definitely I want to see if it continues because like Sam before was very like serious all the time but there were the, the like pranks and the jokes and stuff I feel like they're writing him now kind of like goofy like mm-hmm. a little bit like more awkward and a little bit more like making jokes and things i don't i mean he, he did before but it's different kind of so i wonder if that plays into what yellow eye said at the end of season two like how how sure you brought that like, you brought back 100 percent sam oh okay you know we're, we're starting to see the sort of shift towards dean's perspective mm-hmm. in this show so I'm wondering if like this is a little because we also know that Dean's not a reliable narrator. So I do wonder if it's like a little bit of like Dean's hazing, like Dean's lens at looking at Sam. Oh, okay. Huh. I that is very much like that. That's how I see it. Mm. I don't think that's how it's written. Um, I think it's. I think because it's Kripke who wrote this episode, I don't think he knows who Sam is anymore. Yeah, without all the baggage, I think. I'm not sure he knows. Yeah, I think you're right. I think Sam's had to remake himself almost. And I think this comes through in the writing because I do think this is where they start to change Sam. And he becomes a little more... I think awkward is a good word for Sam, actually. Like, if you think about him later yeah. on, like, the way he interacts with people can sometimes be a bit, like, stilted. It's, like, kind of cute, kind of stiltedness, like, a little awkwardness mm-hmm. about it. But um, you don't really see that in seasons one and two. Like, he's very empathetic and, like, chill with people. Yeah. Whereas now he's already like put his foot in his mouth with Isaac and Tamara and now mm-hmm. he's like making little jokes. I think part of it is he's finding his own humour that's not just Dean jokes rehashed yes. as well. Hmm. I, t- I just thought it was no- worth noting actually because I-, I really liked Sam in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Like he, I, w- I mean, you know, I've made fun of his like some of his choices yeah. um, and you know the, his season season one Sam has never been my favourite mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> it's almost like a relaxed Sam I think he, yeah. d- he does look like there's kind of like a weight off his shoulders kind of and I know mm-hmm. they've got other stuff going on like I know Dean's going to hell blah 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 but like yeah I feel like his main baggage is just he's resolved that for like a moment you know, mm-hmm. Dean was talking about taking their like five minutes to celebrate. I think this is yeah. Sam kind of doing that almost. <laughs> so as as they're sitting in the car talking about like the basically the backstory, they see Rosen walk past the car. Sam and Dean are all gun ho, ready to go, and Bobby's like, "No, we have to wait. We don't know what we're dealing with. Mm-hmm. We should, you know, take time to find out what's going on." They don't get to have that because Tamara and Isaac walk into a bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> set up to a bad joke <laughs> you know Tamara and Isaac they go they go sit down and like not so subtly check that they have holy water in a flask <laughs> yeah like, I know they see that Rosen's about to go to the restroom which wouldn't that flag you 
<laughs> this is exactly what I thought when he did that because I was like, they definitely have hunted demons before because they were talking about this holy wood they have and stuff. Mm-hmm. Surely they must know, like, demons probably don't need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Though, actually, is that ever... I feel I like know. that's definitely... Tr- I, look, I don't think they ever explicitly said demons don't need to go to the bathroom. I feel like it's very heavily implied. <laughs> because there's also, there's no indication that they eat. There's yeah. only, like, the only thing that you ever see them do is drink alcohol. Mm. And, like, if they have to pretend to be human, they're, like, I think of some of the diner scenes that have happened. Yeah. They're there, but, you know, I don't think... Because we've seen Meg die multiple times yeah. in season one. Mm-hmm. So clearly it doesn't matter what happens to the actual human body. So they shouldn't need to eat or drink or anything. I have so many theories about vessels uh, that maybe it's for another <laughs> day. <laughs> yeah, I think hopefully when there's a more of a vessel-oriented story, we can mm-hmm. talk about it a bit more. So yeah, anyway. So the, the thing that clued me in as to what was going to happen next mm. was that Tamara declared her love to Isaac. I love you. I know. Oh, joy. What's going to happen to Isaac, I wonder? <laughs> <laughs> they did it in the Star Wars, the Star Wars declaration. And like that combined with this show is bad omens. And so it turns out it was a trap. It's actually a demon bar. This scene, I actually almost threw up. Oh. There was something about it I really like ooh, I couldn't I kind of had to skip over it a little mm-hmm. bit um, because one of the demons does the same thing as the the guy that we saw at the beginning he touches Isaac and says because they try to fight and obviously they can't fight mm-hmm. you should you should drink this and it's like drain cleaner yeah and then he starts to do that and it it turned my stomach yeah, it's one of the more horrific deaths we've seen in Supernatural, I think, actually. I wouldn't blame anyone for not watching it again. I definitely would not recommend. <laughs> no. If you can skip it, do skip it, because it, like, I understand what they were trying to do with this, to mm-hmm. show that, like, there is no way to physically stop yourself from this demon, like, telling you what to do. Yeah. The problem I have with it is, like, how this episode ends. Mm. So against what everybody, all of the demons died, right? Yeah. In this, and I feel like had one of them survived, mm-hmm. this might have been better because they would have known like this is a possibility. Yeah. But because everybody dies, mm. I'm like, did it really need to go on for that long? Yeah, I agree with you actually. I yeah, I feel it was over, overdone. I think. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I didn't like it. I did make a point with this, like, when the demons first appear and, like, show themselves in this scene, I'm so desensitised because I've watched so much Supernatural, but, like, if watching this for the first time, it must have been quite shocking, because this is the first, like, this is the most demons we've ever seen in one place at a time. That's very true. I didn't didn't clock that either. All be demons, it's like, oh, crap, yeah, there's demons (laughs) everywhere now. Though, again, at the same time, we know that, well, I guess this, this is reinforcing the fact that there's demons everywhere. Mm-hmm. The amount of times there's been a diner full of <laughs> demons, this is just like, oh, okay, there's just a few demons in a bar. Like, <laughs> a few demons walk into a bar, one has holy water and screams. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is it. <laughs> while, while Isaac is dying, we hear Bobby and Dean, mm-hmm. and they're trying to get in. They're trying yeah. to get into this bar, and they can't, they can't do that. And then... Bobby backs his car into the bar, <laughs> yeah. just destroys destroys a wall, and then they they literally come out swinging. They all come out and they're throwing holy water at the demons, and like we see this sort of smoke coming off of them and like them retracting. So Kim Manners does a little commentary on this um, on the first three episodes, like specific scenes, and he said this scene had like the real opportunity to be like incredibly cheesy and bad. But, like, it actually turned out all right. Um, he said he tried to shoot this like a Western. Um, mm-hmm. So he wanted this to be, like, Western style. I don't know what he means by that, I, but, like... I was going to say, what, what does that mean? Like, besides the fact of, like, people fighting in a bar, yeah, what does that mean? I think that's what it must mean. Like, uh, just the way it was shot. It was good, because he's right. It could have turned out real bad. It's like you jump out of the car and like start splashing people with water. <laughs> But it is, it does done, like, it is done well. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely, 
It's, it's weird because it feels like the water has weight. Do you yes. know what I mean by that? That's because it does. Because it has a leave in it. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. But like, you know, the, the way that they're like, they have to throw it. Yeah. Like, it's effort. Like, it's not just like sprinkle, sprinkle. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, this is, this is going to hurt you and I'm going to throw it at you. Like kind of thing. Yeah, there's aggression behind the water splashing. I I, I do appreciate mm-hmm. it. It's taken seriously in Supernatural. Yeah, which I think is such a weird thing to say, but yeah, mm. I, I would I would love for some people to like take some of the stuff we've said out of con- like relating to the show yeah. out of context <laughs> because some <laughs> of it is just like what. <laughs> so Tamara is obviously distressed and trying to get to Isaac, mm-hmm. and Sam pulls her away into the car. Dean gets kind of it looks like he gets backed into a corner like I couldn't quite figure out where he was Mm. in the so the way I saw this scene was basically they're all getting into the car like go 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 but it looks like Dean wants to stay and fight it out like he acts like he wants to stay and like fight and he's throwing water and it, it runs out so he goes to the boot of the car and gets another flask but it's empty and then one of the demon like advances on him and uh, Mm -hmm. he pulls the old uh, Crowley maneuver (laughs) (laughs) throws him in the boot of the car with a a demon seal on it or devil strap rather I I have to say I really appreciated that scene the way it was done was Mm -hmm. like it was so smooth I was like oh yeah oh yeah (laughs) I initially read it like I said like oh Dean's just being really reckless like he wants to stay behind and fight and then it's like oh Mm -hmm. it was all a massive setup of course, now that they have this demon, they've tied him to a chair. Mm-hmm. I So I read this, is that they were in the house from the beginning scene. Yeah, see, I was really confused between the two houses. I didn't quite understand this, like, going back and forth, because they actually looked very similar. <laughs> I think that's the problem. Yeah. Like, they mm-hmm. could have had, like, Isaac and Tamara, like, live in a terraced house or something, like, just <laughs> make it clear. <laughs> I think... You're right, I think they're in the house from the beginning. The bodies have been cleared out because they they talked about the coroner's office taking them, etc. So it would make sense, right? No one cares about this house anymore, so... Well, so... But then it would make more sense to be in Tamara and Isaac's place because they would have all the supplies, essentially. No, it must be their house because they have quite a, like... Like, the devil's trap they have on the ceiling here is must have taken ages to do. And not that mm-hmm. much time has passed, so it must be their house. It must be a hunter's house. So the demon's in the chair. Tamara and is talking with Bobby and uh, uh, Sam and Dean, and mm-hmm. she's arguing that they need, need to go back to get his body. And they're like, well, we can't. You know, there's seven demons in this one place. There's nothing we can really do about it. Yeah. So, but Dean actually agrees that mm-hmm. they, they sh- like he'll go with her. Their conversation is interrupted because Bobby comes and has figured out who all of these demons are. They are the seven deadly sins. Dean makes a seven, a seven reference here. What's in the box? <laughs> Red pit, seven, no? Some reason, this introduction of the seven deadly sins got me thinking about the introduction of the four horsemen. Same, yeah. And then I had to go watch Death's introduction oh. because I think that's the best introduction of a character that has ever been just everything about it the song the the, what happens the like the the edit or just everything about it was really well done yeah it's it's, it's, it is great it's very i'm I'm looking forward to getting there to be honest me too it's so far away because okay the seven deadly sins is like a whole thing and like this was super anticlimactic if you do actually compare this with the introduction of the horseman like, you think they would be on par. Well, maybe not on par, but, like, lower rank. This episode is called The Magnificent Seven. Like, could they not have made it more like a... Magnificent? Yeah. <laughs> or, like, more tro- like more cowboy tropes, right? Yes. More Western mm-hmm. tropes. They could have had, like... I mean, the bar scene. Okay. So Isaac and, and Tamara go into the bar and they just sit down fine. But... They could have done the whole like tropey thing from a western where they walk in and all the people like turn and look at them and then like go back mm-hmm. to their drinks. Like even that kind of stuff. They they give them such weight as mm-hmm. being the seven deadly sins. Yeah. Which actually, you know, I wonder if 
they were not actually the seven deadly sins because the only reason why they are considered a little bit more powerful is because they don't they just sort of touch somebody and mm-hmm. they can they'll do what they say other than that they're just normal demons well like i said they, they they could have been set up to be literally like the main antagonists of this series like maybe but they are kind of anticlimactic but the only thing i can see of why they did this is the upping of the stakes right so mm-hmm. before one demon was really hard to kill but now we've got seven and they're really powerful they're more powerful than normal demons but actually what happens in this episode is that we managed to like fight them and so it's showing how the characters have progressed to be able to fight things that are stronger i guess so dean's just made a seven reference and all three of them look at him like this is not the this is not the time to be making this reference <laughs> love him so anyway mb starts laughing and reveals or because they, they sort of ask you know what what do you want like mm-hmm. what why are you here what's what's going on and essentially mb says well we're out that's all we wanted yeah you know hell is what it is it's hell and then he sort of points out everybody's sin essentially <laughs> You really think you're better than me? (laughs) Which one of you can cast the first stone, huh? What about you, Dean? You're practically a a walking billboard of gluttony and lust. And Tamara, all that wrath, oh. This this all was just very like villain monologuing, I feel, with with, um, Envy here. Like, you know, calling humans animals and like, you'll be slaughtered like animals too and there are others coming for you etc what i thought was really interesting before they start talking to envy was that they're all talking about like you know going after and doing things and like get you know killing these demons and going to get isaac and they're all kind of arguing about it and like bobby gets so angry like so quickly at them he kind of like oh, right. shouts at them like you know, we're going to take a breath and we're going to figure this out. And, like, he really, really does, like, get angry. And, like, Sam and Dean kind of look at each other because Bobby's getting angry with Tamara because she wants to go mm-hmm. after Isaac. They look at each other like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're glad we're not at the end of that one. <laughs> exactly. I, I just thought it was really interesting to see Bobby in that kind of, like, he's angry, but, like, protective angry, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. He's He is definitely the... He's the one of the only characters who can mostly detach himself from the emotion of a situation yes not in all cases but in most cases he's the one who will turn around and be like you're being you're being an idiot as his catchphrase hasn't come in yet but when it does (laughs) yeah you need to see it from a place of reason and Mm -hmm. he is that point of reason yeah that's true actually huh i thought Cass was spock coded but maybe it was bobby all along (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> he i mean like i said it's not again it's not always there are <laughs> definitely situations where he has he himself has let his emotions get the mm-hmm. best of him but he is also human so you know yeah that was that's was bound to happen it was just interesting to see him in this scene like get like that because we haven't really seen bobby I think we kind of saw bobby be a bit ang- well he was very angry with Dean last episode um mm-hmm. when he found out about the deal but in this case it's yeah. just Again, protective and angry. So, yeah, they have this whole conversation with Envy and he kind of says to them that the other sins are coming for them. And Dean yeah. tells him that, well, you know, they're not going to find you because you're going to be in hell. And mm-hmm. they let Tamara exercise him. I have, to, I have to give props to the actor who played Envy. His, like, subtle face change when he realises what's about to happen. Yeah. Honestly, I I was like, it's not going to be this simple, is it? Is it? Because, yeah. like, they walk away. Like, Bobby, Sam, and Dean, they all walk away. And I'm like, you're just going to leave her? Like, mm-hmm. she not going to do something? And, like, no. She, like, she literally just exercises him. <laughs> like, in non-supernatural fashion. <laughs> well, yeah, this is it. So we don't see it. it, it it's done off camera. But she does, like, you know, they, she starts exorcism and they kind of leave her to it. They, they kind of have a, a conversation here about what they're going to do because there are six more demons that they need to like catch and exercise or kill. And mm-hmm. this is where, you know, it made me think again, they're, they're against stuff that we haven't seen before because they really are concerned about how they're going to do this. And I'm thinking like, 
in the future it's like 16 and it's like meh (laughs) (laughs) yeah so Dean offers to stay behind to buy them time and like both Bobby Mm -hmm. and Sam are like no (laughs) Um, and they kind of you know they talk about Dean tries to convince them says that they're outnumbered Sam says and I pause the episode because I had a little meltdown if we're going down we're going down together all right you know, there was never a time in Supernatural where that happened. Where they all go down together? Mm, I can't think of one. There's been situations no. where they've gone in, like, ready to go out, like, all together. No, you're right. It's either one or the other. It's never... Yeah. See... Which, which is why I always thought the show would... With both of them going out together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, you know, I would have been happier... Yeah, same. ...with this finale. Mm-hmm. If, yeah. And... You know, if they were both in heaven for the last 30 minutes of the episode, I probably wouldn't have had such a visual reaction. Well, the reason that the cycle keeps happening is because, you know, the big bad is kind of dumb and only ever kills one of them. So the other one brings (laughs) the other one back. And like it keeps happening. So like, yes, surely the way to end it is for them both to go out. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And then there's no one to bring them back. Exactly. It stops the idea that one of them might have given up on the other. Yeah. It's like, there is no, there is no, <laughs> they have no option. Because it was <laughs> such resentment for Sam, right, in the finale that I I felt as well, as of like, why are you mm-hmm. doing anything? Because exactly. we've been taught that this is what they do. So like, why aren't you doing anything? And yeah, I guess you could argue like they're finally breaking that cycle. Do you not think that would have weighed in Sam's mind for the rest of his life? Like, I know how to bring people back from the dead. But yet. <laughs> you literally know God. Like, you literally know God. <laughs> like. <laughs> he didn't even try. Like, he didn't even he, try. He, 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 he had God on his side. He could have brought Dean back. No consequences. There could have been so, like, or at least could have tried. I mean, maybe, you know, Jack would have gone, well, you know, this is the way it is. Like, I'm a non-interfering god. Dean's going to be happy in heaven, so you've got to let him go. That could have been a whole conversation. But Sam mm-hmm. didn't even try. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, how did we even get to this point? <laughs> Look, because he said if we're going down we're going down together and that's blatantly yes. not true so... this is one of them always pushes the other one out of the way essentially it's just it just just absolute brain worms to be honest yes anyway yeah yeah small brain <laughs> so dean agrees that it, okay well fine if the demons are coming for them let's not make it easy for them and they, they kind of start mm-hmm. preparing tamara comes back out after finishing exercising the demon and they ask about Walter and she's like, he didn't make it. Which, <clears throat> this was weird to me. It was quite callous the way she said that. And yes. do you think that she killed Walter on purpose as like revenge for Isaac? <sighs> yes. So I, I think there is a way to do exorcisms without injuring the person. Mm-hmm. And then there's ways to do it where a person like a a person will die because we we hear his scream in the background Mm -hmm. yeah no i think i think she killed him i do think i do too yeah i do which is quite like callous it was quite surprising it kind of starts the trend of like not really caring what happens to demons vessels or angels for that matter in the show i feel there's a little bit here at the end i would give them that where they kind of address this I, I do wonder if it was like, because we, you know, Envy did point out her wrath. Yeah. So I do wonder if it was like she wanted revenge. Mm-hmm. The only other thing it could be is that, like, it you know, Meg, Meg's vessel died because she'd fallen out that window. So something like that had happened in the meantime, but we don't know that. And it did, just the way Tamara says it, just made it sound like she killed the guy. Um. Yeah. Though I know the way that you know uh, they was portrayed of a possession, like I said, it was very violent and mm-hmm. very violating. So who knows? Yeah, maybe, maybe the act of being possessed can cause harm to somebody. That's true, actually. Yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. 
never thought of it that way. But who knows? These are questions that never get answered <laughs> in this show. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So it's it's obviously some time has passed because they've managed to set up like various things around the house, and they're all watching outside the window at various points. Isaac is the first to appear. I hate this. I, like I actually like. Okay, I don't know what it is. Don't, don't know if it's cause, maybe because it's like coming up to my anniversary or what. Like, I don't know. This whole like husband-wife thing just hit me. Because I was trying <laughs> to think, like, what would I do if it was my husband calling for help from the other side of the door? He got killed by demons. That's him, though. And, it, yeah, it made me think of Dean running up the stairs in uh, 1590. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> As well. I don't know. It was it, it was actually quite tough to watch. I think for for me, I don't know if I'm just overly emotional this like this evening. <laughs> um, but I mean, honestly, what would you do? I, I mean, Bobby manages to stop Tamara from going to him if she wants to, because Isaac is kind of shouting that he kind of needs help. I think the demon possessing Isaac should have kept up the ruse a little longer, and it may have worked a bit yes. more. Her sadness turns to rage yeah. because he starts to bring up why they got into hunting essentially that mm-hmm. like you're not going to do anything like you didn't do anything for our child it sounds yeah. a similar story to gordon's almost that like they yeah. were living kind of a normal life and um something broke into their house killed their daughter i think but like clearly playing into their like guilt over that i wonder if this was all always part of the plan because she opens the door goes to attack him and she breaks the salt line and then everybody comes in but like, how else would have they gotten in because they had this giant salt line? I don't think it was because I think that what they were maybe trying to do was like lure them in like one at a time, whatever. You know, you seal the mm-hmm. house, you try and get one in, trap it, exercise it, etc. I don't mm-hmm. think they necessarily intended for them all to come in the house at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe not. She managed to like stab him with this piece of wood, you know, exercise him or whatever. We don't really see what happens there. Um, she stakes him like a vampire from Buffy. And I'm just saying that again because the stake is very... And we never see vampires get staked in this. So I was like, I very much appreciated her staking. I... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I can understand why that they, they chose not to because it is too close to, uh, mm. to Buffy. Um, I was going to say Buffy. Buffy. <laughs> Vampires from Buffy. So I guess that's why they chose the like decapitation Really. Yeah, I just I just like the one time we get to see someone stake someone through the heart. I, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, I we have seen a zombie get staked through the heart. That's true. It didn't feel like this felt very buffy though. It's, it's, it's particularly Well, it has a buffy vibe because it's this badass woman who's just yes. like stabbed this dude. And I always feel like with Buffy, she's always in this position in like she's on top of the demon. I've bested you in a fight and now I'm on top and yeah Ow. love it love it <laughs> absolutely so yeah so the other demons will run into the house and mm-hmm. one focuses on bobby i love this because bobby is such a good actor <laughs> yes <laughs> like he genuinely looks scared <laughs> yeah because the demon's like backing him into a corner and bobby's like oh no please i'm just a little old man <laughs> i'm a whatever a damsel in distress is. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> But of course, you know, Bobby's signature move, he's trapped the demon in a ceiling devil's <laughs> trap. Um, and like his face changes from like scared to like hunter. Oh, a woman demon catches up with Dean and they fight. And I did think about this, like Dean's always fighting the women in Supernatural. Yeah, and I was I was kind of annoyed that they made Lust a woman. Like <gasps> Me too, actually. Why? Because I mean I I guess I guess the the idea is that men are more men have more sexual desire or something i don't i don't agree with that statement whatsoever yeah and also i mean yeah okay so and it, i mean it, of course of course lust was going to go after dean because of the beginning of this episode yeah there are way too many blonde women in this episode just so calling that out there because like <laughs> there were like five blonde women in this one episode they cast Lust as a woman for a few reasons. One, they wanted her to kiss Dean. Simple yes. as that. Yeah. You're, you're right, at the beginning of this episode, it just, I guess it's mirroring that in some way, like twisting the lust that Dean has for life now. 
Anyway. Uh-huh. Um, and, yeah. Lost is always a woman. I don't know if I've ever Lost watched always... anything where, like, the seven deadly sins, Lost has been a man. You know, I would I would love to see, like, an androgynous Lust. Like, that's what, that's what Lust should be. It should be an androgynous person. I have great news to you, Annabelle. Sandman's yes. coming on the TV soon. <laughs> and Desire <laughs> is a non-binary actor. So Good. <laughs> because it shouldn't be gendered. Yeah. I mean, yes, if you would like an actually good representation of Desire, so Desire is from Sandman, always been portrayed in the comic books as androgynous is what they used to, you know, that's the term in the 80s, but we would now say probably non-binary instead. Yeah always been portrayed that way because desire is portrayed as fluid in those so great can't wait for that tv mm-hmm. series lust kisses dean he manages to like break out of her control though so they, they kind of like he he backs into a wall right mm-hmm. and then he manages to like push her away and like shove her into the bathtub full of holy water which is really interesting because the other like when we saw isaac and the other woman, they weren't able to, like, break out of the control of the demon. Mm-hmm. You think it would be stronger here because, like, she's touching him. So yeah. I wonder what that is, just, like, Dean's sheer force of will. So I think maybe it's it's up to a certain point mm. that their influence stays. Like, so we saw with Isaac after he finished the drain cleaner. Yeah. He comes back to himself and then obviously dies. Mm-hmm. And the same with the Envy. Uh, yeah, with Envy after she's killed the woman she comes back to herself she realizes what she's done yes so i wonder if lust's initial touch was Mm. something and it came to the end of that so dean was himself again for like a split second maybe it's only the initiation of the kiss Mm -hmm. and then like yeah once it's kind of going maybe able to break out that's that's probably right so yeah she she gets dunked (laughs) (laughs) I like I like the shots from inside the bathtub. I quite enjoy that. Yes. Sam has some demons break down the door and one of them shouts, Here's Johnny. That's pride. And they, they stop and they, they look at the devil's trap on the ceiling and they like finally learn their lesson. They're like, ah, 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 not today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um and they kind of break it with sort of like psychic power as it splits in two. Mm-hmm. They know who Sam is. The prodigy. The boy king. Which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. And but they don't believe the hype and that they don't have to follow him now that Yellow Eyes is dead. So there's a few little things in that. So maybe the demon army never was gonna kinda work out because demons kinda do what they want. (laughs) Yeah. And also the use of like boy king. I think that's the first time this is used here, and I always feel that's very strongly tied to Lucifer. Mm-hmm. This line here is kind of what I was talking about earlier. The the reason why the war is not started and yeah. like things are not going as planned is because they don't have yellow eyes there anymore. Yeah. We also we also learn a little bit in this season, like almost like the hierarchy of hell. Yeah. It was kind of interesting, like maybe not all of the demons that got released were part of the plan anyway. Mm. They just got out because they they saw an opening essentially i think that's pretty much proven to be the case as well i feel a very opportunistic yeah. um mm-hmm. they? The, this is the, like envy's comment is not the first time that a demon has said like they hate being in hell because it's hell yeah like meg has said the same thing so of course like any demon wants to get out <laughs> well this is it exactly so yeah i just i thought it was interesting because they they seem to be there's a little bit of like alluding here to future plot points so i wondered how much they've yeah. written in advance at this point you know so pride is very much being pride saying you thought you could defeat me me i am the greatest (laughs) you know being very 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 prideful yeah i think it's interesting that wrath doesn't really have uh, you know a say in this (laughs) yeah and sloth either Mm -hmm. i mean sloth was definitely moving way too fast (laughs) <laughs> to be sloth <laughs> so this is what I mean if if they had left one of the demons out which would have been sloth yeah because he you know the whole mm-hmm. idea is that you're too lazy to do anything so yeah. why would he go fight <laughs> absolutely like I, I feel like there would have been more stakes yeah I agree I, I, 
yeah, you're right. The stakes weren't really high enough in this episode. They, they probably, maybe they felt higher when we watched it for the first time. Like, they maybe. might not actually get out of this one. But also, it's the first episode of a season, so of course they are. The build-up to this this fight scene took longer than the fight scene, which yeah. just shouldn't have been the way. No. I feel like ha- they this episode wasn't big enough to be two parts, but it wasn't short <laughs> enough to be one. Yeah, I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. Like, cause you you look at the season one, uh, season two opener, mm-hmm. and like their emotions were running high. Like there were there were stakes, yeah, in it. Mm-hmm. Whereas this one, we already know there's massive stakes because all of these demons yeah. have come out. You've just de- defeated seven of them. <laughs> it's it's really just it's not quite weighted right. Like it, honestly, if you compare this to like in my time of dying or even pilot, it's like what is this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Again, it doesn't it doesn't help that in this fight scene. So Sam is being overpowered mm-hmm. and then this mysterious Bond woman turns up and she's badass and like slits all these people's throats open essentially and kills them all. So <laughs> Kim Manor said they shot this in 120 FPS so that they could speed mm-hmm. it up and slow it down depending on how they wanted to show stuff. And it does I did like this. It did look good. Yes. Yeah. It did. Like the it it definitely had a very big impact on what was happening. Yeah. But again, like, I feel like if anything, this should have been an episode two. Yeah. Yeah. This, this was too much setup for a se- for a season, for a season, mm-hmm. for it to be the first one. Yeah. Like I would have probably liked to have seen what they were doing in that week since the gates were open. Mm hmm. Yeah, I agree. Like, the immediate aftermath would have been interesting, so they could have had them, like, drive off, trying to track down these demons, like, not knowing what's going on, like, reaching out to other people. That would have been dealing with what had happened, you know, Dean making the deal, and... Because it's not mm-hmm. really dealt with in this episode, but I, I guess the, that's... I, in... I feel like that franticness, which they often... So it's not every season that they they continue for exactly what happened. Like, it's not always a a perfect continuation yeah i feel like in this one the frantic franticness of what had just happened and the, the fact that they could you know rejoice in the fact they killed yellow eyes yeah like, all of that is sort of glossed over in this beginning and i feel like they missed a really good opportunity for that i agree it's just i don't know it's very flat to me and you're right like they they introduced lots of stuff here that's kind of then you forget about it because it was kind of a it was just kind of glossed over like so mm-hmm. yeah like i mean this this woman shows up kills loads of demons like what we haven't seen that happen before it is very cool mm-hmm. fight and then that's it she's gone <laughs> yeah i i do like that for her introduction i do i i do yes. yeah i think it is really good um because it is so mysterious she says to him see you around sam and he tries to go after her so obviously she knows who he is we knew that already mm-hmm. And then she's just disappeared again. So we cut to morning and they've got a kind of grave for the demon vessels and they're sorting and burning them, I guess, to purify them. That makes sense. Tamara is having a hunter's funeral for Isaac, sort of mm-hmm. by herself. I have to say, I actually really appreciate the fact, like, and I wonder if this is Bobby's influence, mm. the fact that they're dealing with the corpses. <laughs> they kind of talk about it here, like, the, you know, these poor people... Um, and they actually address it. They never do this with demon vessels. Like, they never address that they like murdered these people. Bobby even says that he's been up all night exercising and he saved two of them. Mm-hmm. So they're making an effort to try and save people who've been possessed. Sam asks Dean if he thinks Tamara is going to be okay. And Dean just says, no, she's not. He's in his feelings um, mm-hmm. at the end of all of this. I think the adrenaline has kind of worn off, you know. <laughs> They kind of talk about the knife that mysterious mm-hmm. lady had. What kind of blade can kill a demon? Yesterday I said there was no such thing. I'm just gonna ask it again, who was that masked chick? Actually, the more troubling question would be how come a girl can fight better than you? <laughs> Three demons, Dean. Oh. At once. Hey, whatever it takes to get you through the night, pal. Yeah, well, if you want a troubling question, I got one for you. What's that? If we let out the seven deadly sins, what else do we let out? Did you not see Tamara fight? Like, she could probably best Sam. <laughs> yeah, take him out. Goodness me. They know women hunters. Like, they are fine. Yeah, he's just messing with Sam here. Okay. okay. 
he was bested by Joe. So that's, he can't say nothing. <laughs> that's actually very true. Like, Sam should have brought that up immediately. Like, come on, Sam. Where, where's the comeback? He'll, he's thinking about it. Like, he, he'll wake up in the middle of the night and be like, Joe bested you. <laughs> <laughs> so true, just bolt upright. <laughs> Joe. I love this shot of them from the grave looking up with the blue sky behind them. As Dean says, like, yeah, that is troubling and just like lights the fire and throws it. <laughs> like, whatever. It's such a nice shot. I it's so it's just really, really pretty. I I looked at it mm-hmm. and like paused it and was like, the sky looks so beautifully blue. Hey, that's that colour they were asking for. <laughs> And I feel like that's very unusual for Kim Manners episode. Usually yeah. they are on the more like desaturated side. Mm-hmm. I, you know, that is something I noticed throughout this whole episode is that everything is bright. Mm. Maybe this was the turning point. I don't really remember, <laughs> to be honest. So Tamara leaves. She leaves with caution. Like she tells mm-hmm. them, you know, to be careful, essentially. Yeah. And we never see her again. She doesn't, we don't know her fate because she's not in another episode yeah what do you think she would have done do you think she would have carried on hunting or tried to give up the life because she's all alone now yeah that's a really tough one i feel like she got her revenge like she never had she doesn't have anyone to go after for killing isaac right she got Mm -hmm. she got that revenge so she doesn't have like a quest like john to go hunt down the demon that killed her husband right but she they were already on a like they were already hunters because of what happened to her yeah. child. Like, that child. So, of course, do you, do you think again going back to like the sacrifice thing? Mm-hmm. Do you think she's realized she's sacrificed enough? Like she lost her whole family. Mm-hmm. So the only thing now is, you know, is it going to be her life that she gives up next, or is she going to try to again break that cycle? But we we never know. Like, I wonder if she was a character that was supposed to come back. Like, yeah. Like, it could have been really interesting to see her. And there are points in this story that she could have reappeared and been like, to help them out, just to find out what happened to her, essentially, and to give her mm-hmm. an ending. I guess, I actually, I'm not too mad about this one. Like, I feel like the open-endedness yeah. of, you know, what's, what's going to happen to Tamara, it's kind of, <laughs> it's it's mirroring Sam and Dean in a weird way. Because Dean looked at her when she was burning Isaac and said that she's not going to be okay. And I think at that mm-hmm. point he was thinking of himself losing Sam, maybe, and how he wouldn't have been okay. He's putting his own feelings onto Tamara. And I think mm-hmm. you're supposed to see it that way. Like, she's going to go do now how Dean would have lived his life without Sam, essentially. But I like, you know, the fact that it's open-ended and we don't know that. Like, sure, I, why can't she give up hunting and, like, go say that she's sacrificed enough and end the cycle, as you said? Because mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be all doom and gloom all the time. <laughs> exactly. Because I, d- I do feel like Tamara's rational enough yeah. to give up hunting. At the same time, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe not. Well, yeah, well, we will never, literally, never know. <laughs> we will never know. <laughs> yeah. So Sam sort of questions whether they're, you know, they're going to actually be able to win this war. Bobby doesn't give an answer. Mm-hmm. He sort of just stays, stays silent. I feel like that's very telling, again, because that they are start, starting to use Bobby as a father figure. Yeah. John seemed to always have the answers, right? Yeah. For the most part, whenever I, they came across something, he would always have a some sort of plan. Yeah, I um, think so. So it's kind of interesting that we are shown Bobby to be a father figure, like a, a more realistic father figure yeah. that your parents don't always have the answer but I feel like Bobby's more willing to work with Sam and Dean about getting an answer rather than being told what the answer is no I, th- I think so that he is he is straight with them what's I was trying to think like of, of any instance and I'm sure there is one that Bobby has ever lied to them and I can't think of one like I can't think of an, of an instance where Bobby has not told them the truth so I think for him to say here, like, it, everything, you know, we'll figure this out or everything will be fine, would mm-hmm. it not be truthful enough for Bobby as a character. Like, that's why he stays silent instead. I do feel like he, I don't think he, again, prove us wrong, please, because we, we want to know. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like his lies are usually omissions. 
rather yes. than full on lies. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, for one thing, you know, kind of lying by omission to Sam when he was brought back by Dean, like last episode. Like he definitely did right. just do that. Yeah. What I meant is he's never like outright lied to them, you know, like told them yeah. something that wasn't true. I feel mm-hmm. like lie by omission they all do in this series. Like every single character does it. <laughs> Very true. Um, so it's a character trait across <laughs> everybody. <laughs> it would be unusual for him not to do it, but um, yeah. I think that's why he says there's nothing here, and it's so telling. It's like, oh, the face he gives them. It's like, oh no, it's not going to be good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So then Bobby leaves them to do whatever Bobby does. <laughs> Go fix someone else's problem. I'm sure. Yeah. Now he just um, goes hang then... out with Rufus, right? Like they play chess. Yeah, exactly. They, like, play poker. They <laughs> clean their guns. <laughs> Absolutely. That's exactly what they're doing. And nobody can tell me otherwise. <laughs> so Sam uh, then suggests to Dean that... Because they're sort of like, well, what do we do next? And he suggests a voodoo priest in New Orleans to reverse the demon deal. Yeah. So it's clear that they haven't spoken about it in the past week because Dean reveals to Sam that... You know, anything, if we try to back out of this deal, change the deal, Sam will drop dead. Yeah. We trap the crossroads demon, trick it, try to welch our way out of the deal in any way, Mm -hmm. you die. Okay? You die. Those are the terms, there's no way out of it. If you try to find a way, so help me God, I'm gonna stop you. He says to Sam, I couldn't live with you dead, which is just such a Dean line, I guess. Like, it's so true though, isn't it? Yeah. And then sort of Sam brings up Dean's selfishness mm-hmm. to that. Like, he, he brings up how Dean had felt after John made a deal for him. So what, now I live and you die? That's a general idea, yeah. yeah well, you're a hypocrite, Dean. How did you feel when Dad sold his soul for you? Because I was there. I remember. You were twisted and broken. And now you go and do the same thing. To me. I would feel kind of thing. And I do like... Um, Dean's response in this, mm-hmm. where he says, after everything I've done for this family, I think I'm entitled. Yeah, that was great. That is a, that is a character growth moment, <laughs> I feel. I think Dean does know it was selfish to bring Sam back. I think he knows it was selfish. Mm-hmm. Like, absolutely. I don't think he did it for Sam. I think he did do it for himself because he didn't know what to do without him. And he felt like he had screwed up and he was fixing a mistake that he perceived he had made. Yeah. You know? Because, you know, Sam probably would have been fine. At this point in his life, Sam probably wasn't going to go to hell. I mean, they didn't know that. But, like, you know, he probably would have been fine. So, yeah, it was entirely for him. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's it's not entirely selfish of Dean. Because I feel like Dean thinks that Sam will be able to carry on without him. That's true. At the end of Dean's year, Sam still has a potential to go back to having a normal life at this point. Mm-hmm. At this point, he could just leave hunting, go back to school, and live an apple pie life. Yeah. In Dean's mind. Sam kind of backs off really quickly. Yeah. What you did was selfish. Yeah, you're right. It was selfish. But I'm okay with that. I'm not. Tough. After everything I've done for this family, I think I'm entitled. Truth is, I'm tired, Sam. And I don't know, it's like there's a, a light at the end of the tunnel. It's hellfire, Dean. Yeah, whatever. You're alive. I feel good. For the first time in a long time. I got a year to live, Sam. I'd like to make the most of it. So what do you say we kill some evil sons of bitches and we raise a little hell, huh? You're unbelievable. Very true. Is that that whole that whole thing? Like they start joking about it. I don't know if Sam's line of hellfire Dean. Like he says it very straight, but I don't know if it was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> like, um, it's not a good joke if it is one. Yeah, I think Sam acquiesces to Dean super quickly here, and like yeah. the fact that Dean is still spouting that he's tired and like done. He is just so willing to throw his life away, mm-hmm. and. It just, it never stops. It never ends. Like, a good... Like, a I can, song that never ends. <laughs> I'm just picturing all the times in Supernatural that Dean's just, like, 
runs towards danger or like throws his life away or like sacrifices himself for someone else or it's very frustrating and I think do you think here him saying that he's done is that by giving up his life for Sam which is essentially what he's done here he feels mm-hmm. like mission complete might as well there's there's no going up from here I've achieved my ultimate goal in life so what's the point I guess in his mind right he has he has protected Sam at this mm-hmm. point. The worst thing has happened. Sam died. Yeah, but he brought him back, mm-hmm. so he succeeded in his life's mission. So he's okay with that. Yeah. God, what you said last time just like so resonates with me. It's like John was always training him to give his life for Sam, and then he did, and now he doesn't know what to do. So he's just like, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically it, isn't it? Wow. This is this is a show we watch for fun. i wouldn't have guessed it (laughs) dean going to hell is going to be addressed in the next 15 episodes so like i'm sure we'll bring it up again but this this episode wasn't wasn't my favorite series starter i feel like the seven deadly sins could have been a whole thing and they were just brought in for one episode kind of lamely um and Mm -hmm. then all killed off so fine the problem is, is like we don't know where you go from there because we don't know that there's like princes of hell or like angels. So as far as we know, they've just beaten some stronger demons. So we don't know there's anything stronger than that. So maybe they've won. Right. And the, the only thing that, you know, is Ruby with this knife. Yeah. So like that's that's the intrigue. But I don't feel like that's enough. No. For a season opener. You're right, that's the only thing, isn't it? It's Okay, it's how are we going to get Dean out of this deal or how that's going to end and who's the mysterious woman with the knife? And, I mean, that that how are we going to get Dean out of this deal has already been shot down. Yeah, that's true. Because we've seen that Dean's going to scupper whatever Sam's bring up on that. Mm -hmm. This is it, isn't it? It's not um, really established anything, this episode. It hasn't really, like, begun a storyline. Has it, it didn't end a storyline and it didn't begin one. It mm. just sort of was there. <laughs> it was it was a weird crossover without any sort of firm conclusion or beginning. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a strong move to put just a monster of the week episode as your like open starter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and a, and a very typical like there was no there was nothing in this formula mm. that made it stand out. No, that's right. Yeah. I must say I'm a little bit disappointed, but I mean, what's the next episode? Like, maybe we can bring it back. I don't know, because it's the kids or the kids are all right. Okay, which is the introduction of Lisa. Okay, how but does that like, connect to the? Oh, I can kind of see it, maybe. The so the only thing I could think of is that you know there's supposed to be some sort of parallel between her and Ruby, right? Ah, uh, see, I see Lisa in a different way, and we're gonna. I think. I think we might differ on Lisa. And like, so, I mean, th- this is purely from, because I like I kind of remember who Lisa is to Dean, but at the same time, kind of not really. I'm saying this is in terms of like an introduction to a female character. Mm-hmm. That, and the basic of all forms, because we've just been introduced to a female character in this who knows Sam, who's very Sam oriented. And now we're being introduced to a very Dean oriented female mm, character the love interest parallel i got you right yes indeed right. yeah definitely um oh yeah you're probably right actually i i've got all oh, no i i do have thoughts in this next episode okay no i am looking forward to it okay so thank you again to our artist and friend the pixel agora who designed our beautiful logo art please go and commission them on kofi and you can interact with us on social media twitter tumblr Facebook, etc. We're Escaping Purgatory Podcast pretty much everywhere. Um, the new feature on Spotify um, where we post questions, please keep interacting with that. You can pin on there our favourite answers to those questions, which I have been doing so. So thank you to the people who are uh, responding to those questions. So we had a, you know, we, we've come back from our rest and we started our journey. We had a little bit of a stumble, but hopefully next week we'll get a little bit of a stronger footing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.